Hey, welcome to another episode of Chaz Beer Reviews. Continuing with the BJCP style guidelines, continuing with 21B specialty IPA. Now we're on brown IPA. Overall impression, hoppy, bitter, and moderately strong like an American IPA, but with some caramel, chocolate, toffee, and or dark fruit malt character as in an American brown ale. Retaining the dryish finish and lean body that makes IPA so drinkable, a brown IPA is a little more flavorful and malty than an American IPA without being sweet or heavy. And I've got, which I always thought this was the original, but I guess not. It's certainly the first brown IPA I ever had was Dogfish Head Indian Brown Dark IPA. What's ABV in this? Seven something? Focus. 7.2. I didn't realize it was that strong. Haven't had this in a long time. Let's check the comments, history, all that stuff. So, you know, previously, again, they're all redone. They just repeat the same thing. You know, it might have been a subgenre of American brown ales, hoppier and stronger than normal products, but still maintaining essential drinkability by avoiding sweet flavors or heavy body or finish. The hops and malt can combine to produce an interesting interactions. And under history, they say, you know, it was known as hoppier American brown ale or sometimes Texas brown ale, despite origins in California. All right, so the characteristic ingredients similar to American IPA, but with medium or dark crystal malts, lightly roasted chocolate type malts, and other intermediate color character malts. Say malt enough time. May use sugar adjuncts, including brown sugar, American New World finishing hops, um, and again, choice of hops and character malts is synergistic. They have to complement each other, not clash. Look at our vitals, 40, 70 IBUs, 11, 19 SRM, 5.5, 7.5 ABV. And this is, of course, the first on the list of the commercial examples. So let's dig into the aroma here. Well, I'm definitely getting a classic uh, American brown ale. So those, um, you know, they said the chocolate, the lightly roasted dark crystal malts. I'm getting those. I will say it's sweet, but it's not like super, super sweet. Um, so it does like, yeah, a little bit of a caramel or a toffee. As far as like the hops, I mean, they're there. They're more of like a floral kind of a hop. I would not say that they're citrusy. Um, maybe like slightly piney, but it's more floral, floral or earthy. And also this bottle is like five months old, so they might have faded, you know, some by now, but um yeah, it's it's a good smelling beer. It could could pass on the nose as just a brown ale. Let's check the specs on aroma. Whoops. A well, it's long. A moderate to moderately strong fresh hop aroma featuring one or more characteristics of American and New World hops. Um, all right. Well, they, they say moderate. I would say moderate. True. Many versions are dry hopped and contain additional fresh hop aroma. This is desirable, not required. I would grassiness should be minimal, if present. No grass. A medium low to medium multi speed aroma mixes in well with a hop selection and often features chocolate, nuts, dark caramel, toffee, toasted bread, and or dark fruit character. All right, we'll check on that. Yes, true. Um, and that's interesting to say as, as low as medium low. Medium low to medium. So yeah, I would say it's about medium. Fruitiness from yeast may be de detected in some versions though. Neutral fermentation character is also acceptable. If there's a yeast touches in here, I can't really tell. Uh, Restrained alcohol note may be present, but this character is being the best. You know, 7.2. I am not smelling any alcohol. Any American or New World hot character is acceptable, but new hot varieties can need to be released and should not constrain the style. All right. So, yeah, it's it smells good to me. It smells more like a traditional uh, brown IPA than a – or a traditional brown ale than a brown IPA. But, again, like I said, it's – the bottle is five months old, so the hops have definitely dropped, like, a little bit. Um, I, I will go nine because it was still within the guidelines. It's just not – you know, as good as it could be. All right, so holding this up to the sunlight, it is a beautiful ruby color on the handle. I don't know if that's picking up on camera. Otherwise, kind of a brown brown body. It had about a two-finger head when I poured it there. Let's see what the uh, SRM is. So down, the light part is 17. The dark part's like maybe 27 to 34. It's kind of hard. It's always hard to judge the dark, dark beer colors. Let's check the specs on appearance. Color ranges from reddish brown to dark brown, but not black. True. Frequently opaque, but should be clear if visible. True. Unfiltered dry hop versions may be a bit hazy. Medium sized cream color to tan head with good persistence. Absolutely true. So totally on point for the appearance there. Full three out of three um, as a good commercial beer should be. All right. So let's dig in here. Cheers. So yeah, up front, up front I'm getting like a little bit of chocolate, the co you know, the classic brown ale kind of flavors. You know, the confectionery flavors, sweet, but far, far from cloying. It's not a southern tier um, creme brulee or something like that. And the hops are there, too. So, like, up front, they're kind of like a floral, I guess, the aroma, kind of floral, 
earthy kind of thing. I would not call them spicy. I would not call them citrusy. Um, I probably wouldn't call them dank, really. Um, so, um, yeah, so you're getting floral floral hops up front. Like, they're, they're subtle. And then once it hits the apex and starts going down, you're getting a bit stronger for bitterness along with, like, some... A little bit of like a roasty malt, so you're getting this like kind of crunchy, kind of toasty kind of flavor. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I haven't had a brown ale in a long time. Forgot how good these were. Um, yeah, so it's an interesting mix because you've got sweetness and bitterness, and they're really well balanced. And you wouldn't think like, you know, those kind of flavors would go well together, but they actually do pretty well. 7.2 ABV, no alcohol flavor, no alcohol warmth or heat or anything like that. Uh, yeah, so to me, I think it's, like, really well balanced. I think, like, the hops are, you know, not to sound a broken record, I think the hops have dropped a little, but, um, I prefer, like, that more resiny, kind of piney, fresh hop kind of thing, but, you know, the, what's here is nice. So, let's check the specs on flavor. Hop flavor is medium to high and should reflect an American or New World hop character. You read the rest. Um, medium high to high hot bitterness. Yeah, I'd say, uh, well, they say medium high. I'd probably put it about medium. Malt flavor should be medium low to medium and is generally clean, but malty sweet up front with milk chocolate, cocoa, toffee, nutty, biscuity, dark caramel, toasted bread, and or dark fruit malt flavor. So yeah, uh, I mean, not all of those, but quite a few of them, you know, the, uh, nutty, biscuity, n um, chocolate, toasted bread, true. I, I would not call it fruity. It's more like in the kind of grainy, bready kind of a thing. The character malt choices and the hop selection should complement each other and not clash. Uh, true. The, lever, the le level of malt flavor should nearly balance the hop bitterness and flavor presentation. True. Uh, although I think like, this one's really well balanced because the hops are just a little faded. Uh, low yeast or high fruitiness, acceptable but not required. I, like I said, really not getting any fruit um, or yeast esters. Dry to medium finish, residual sweetness should be medium low to none. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's uh, I'm not getting any leftover sweetness. Um, just like the hops linger and like there is like a tiny little bit of a malty aftertaste. I would not call it like sweet or anything. The bitterness and hot flavor may linger in the aftertaste, but should not be harsh. That's what I just said. A very light, clean alcohol flavor may be noted in stronger versions. No roasted, burnt, or harsh, harsh, bitter malt character. Hmm, that's interesting. Why did they put that at the end? I mean, yeah, there is. To me, it's well, burnt or harsh. No, there's nothing like that. Roasted. Well. Yeah, like like roasted as in a porter or stout. Like I'm not getting that, but I am getting like you know toasty. Like I, I can tell there's roasted malt in here, but um, yeah. So it's on point. It's um to me it's really good. It's really well balanced. It's uh just a tad old, but uh, not much I can do about that. Uh yeah, it's good. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 17. Might be a little generous, but uh, you know it is one of the commercial examples of style. So mouthfeel. I put it about. Uh, medium body, medium carbonation, very smooth, not silky smooth. Again, no alcohol warmth or heat or anything. Very, very drinkable. At 7.2, it does drink more like a 5% kind of a beer. I, I mean, it's not exactly sessionable, but I mean, I'm seeing 7.2 on the label and I'm thinking like, you know, pretty big beer. And to me, it's a little more of a just standard kind of a strength thing than anything in borderline Imperial. But uh, yeah, overall drinkability is nice. Mouthfeel, let's check the specs on that. Medium light to medium body with smooth texture, true. Yeah, I'd probably put it in medium body. Medium, medium high carbonation, true. No harsh hop driver synergy, true. Very light, smooth alcohol warming, not a fault if it does not intrude into overall balance. I would say four. I mean, really, it's a perfect mouthfeel, but um, overall impression, I'm going to say eight out of 10. That's a total score of 41 out of 50. So I'm going to drop something. I'm going to drop. I'm going to drop the flavor down to a 16. But uh, yeah, so that's a total score of 40 out of 50 again. Um, if this was super fresh right at the bottom line, this would be, you know, probably a 50. But um, this is probably what you're going to experience when you get this at your local bottle shop. So yeah, 40 out of 50, 8 out of 10 for Dogfish Head Indian Brown. I uh, like it. Check it out. Um, I think I might like brown IPAs more than black IPAs just because they're more versatile. There's like more you can do with them. This makes a better bitter, uh, better dinner beer than like a black IPA or red IPA, which is what we got coming up next. All right. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Somebody brewed it. 
Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better.